What's up everybody? My name is Lunchbox and today we're going to take a little adventure. Let's mod. Okay, first we're going to start off with a few tips. Tip number one, cup of tea can't hurt. Tip number two, take notes. Take lots of notes. You don't just want to build and save. Save the final product. You'll need notebooks or scrap paper. As far as the final product goes, you're going to want a log sheet or inventory sheet which will have the final positions of the most important items. I made one up, I have it available for download, check the description. It looks a little bit like this. As all the fields you need. The project name, uh, the name or description of the item that you're using, the code, the position X, Y, and Z, the angle X, Y, and Z, and the scale. And there's even a little spot at the bottom for notes. Um, test. Test a lot before you make your final product. Um, roughly, there's about three, three hours of testing for every 10 minutes that I have on the save. So, a lot of time, but it's worth it in the end if you want to make something that looks really nice. Like this, I like it, I love it. That's why I made it. Don't be afraid to scrap ideas. If you work a whole day and you make something and it doesn't quite feel right, it's not what you want, scrap it and start over. You're bound to come up with something better, having made all these mistakes first. Mistakes are good, if you learn from them. Also, think outside the box. Not every item has to be used the way Bethesda used it. You can get creative. You can build lots of things if you open up your mind a little bit. Okay, next, resources. Resources are very important. Um, one thing that you do not want to do is print out hundreds of pages of codes and go through them all manually. It's tedious. It takes days. Now, the best way to combat this is a program called uh, Test 5 Edit. That's T-E-S 5 Edit. Now, a lot of people use this straight up for modding, but I have found that it is most valuable be um, for finding items. Now, it will have every single item in the game, every magic effect, every set of armor, every spell, things that you didn't even know existed. Really cool stuff. Um, I'll have all kinds of links in the description. Have a look at your leisure. Now, to get Test 5 Edit, um, another program, it, it's probably the easiest one <clears throat> uh, to use, Nexus Mod Manager. You can get uh, Test 5 Edit off of the Nexus, and Mod Manager is probably the easiest way to download certain mods and get them going. Uh, not the same type of modding that I'm talking about, <clears throat> by the way. Okay, so how do you open the console to get this all started? Well, on American keyboards, top left, just under the escape key, you're looking for the tilde key. Looks like this. Like that little swoosh over the N in El Nino. Some people call it tilde, I call it tilde, but like I always say, tomato, tomato, potato, potato, french fries and ketchup. Makes it simple. So, we're going to be going through a few of the basic commands, just a handful to get you going. Um, first, and maybe most important, is the help command. So let's hit tilde and open the console. Now, as you can see, 
I've had quite a few failed takes before this, but we'll let that slide. So let's just say I want to find some armor. If you're looking for a single word, you can enter it just like this. If you're using multiple words, you're going to want to put quotations. Like so. Now, for this, I'm just going to go with the code that I was messing with earlier. So, you also want to keep an eye on the prefixes. These are obviously codes for NPCs, these are quest related codes, and these are containers. So let's just take this armor container here. We'll bring this back up. Um, we'll use this container to explain the second command. Now, that's going to be player place at me. Now, a lot of the times it's going to drop the item directly at your feet and sometimes it can clip through the bottom of the map so what I like to do is I like to jump first there now I know it's not going to be underground so first player period place at me with no spaces now we'll pick the container that we want armor 2001 C1 E5 There it is. Another thing, um, if you're selecting items using the console, don't do it in third person. You'll always just select yourself. So, next on the list, disable and enable. They're usually used side by side. So this is good for getting rid of items that you don't want. Now, typically, anything that has been placed after the fact or anything that is duplicated from a master code, you could say, is going to start with FF. Just saying. So, enable, disable. This will allow you to find out if the code that you see up here is the item that you're looking at, or if it's some random beam of light or fog in between you and the item. Let's type it in. Disable. Now, as you see, it disappeared. So now we know that that is the item we're dealing with. No guesswork. We want it back. Type in enable. Bam. Perfect. Now, say you want to get rid of something. That will bring us to the next code. Mark for delete. Now that we know we're dealing with uh, that item, we can, if we want to delete it, mark for delete. And now it's gone forever. We'll never have to deal with it again. Perfect, right? So let's get our trusty box back. Use the up and down arrow keys to cycle through commands that you've already done. Makes things a lot easier. So we have our box. Um, next is the get POS and set POS. If you want to move something, you should know where it is first. Let's bring up the console again, reselect our item, just in case, it's always good practice. Now there are three axes that you're going to be working with. X, Y, and Z. Up, down, left, right, forward, back. So we will do get POS X. Next Y, then Z. That is going to tell us exactly where it is in the cell. Say we want to move it down. Now keep in mind, um, whether the number is negative or positive. Really gonna come in handy. 
You can put something halfway across the map if you don't put the negative sign. So let's set the position of Z to let's bring it down a bit, negative five, five, zero, zero, okay? Oh, make sure you get your spaces in there. Mm-hmm. See, we dropped it a little bit. That's the difference between five, four, eight, one, and five, five, even, all right? You can see it right there. Next, we're going to go ahead and change the angle. Now, just like with the position, there are three angles. Angle X, angle Y, angle Z. Uh, typically, X and Y angles are going to be zeroed out because those are the... You know, is it tipping this way, tipping that way? Most items are straight up and down vertical. Z is going to spin you around like a top. So let's just say we want to place this. We obviously don't want to place it crooked, right? So we're going to have to straighten it out first. Um, let's uh, just for good measure, we'll get the angles first. Can't spell today, guys. Don't worry, it's been a long day. So angle X, angle Y, angle Z. Um, next, we're going to set the angles. Zero it out. Do the same for Y. And do the same for Z. Now, when you're setting the angle, it's not always going to respond. This is where enable, disable will come in. You can always use enable, disable to sort of lock in the changes that you made to the object. Let's try that. There, so now it is perfectly straight, perfectly angled. It is oriented um, along the east-west, north-south axes. And here it is. All right. So, let's say you'd like to change the scale. Um, as always, it's good to know your starting point, so you want to get the scale first. And 99 times out of 100, it's going to be 1. So, get scale. You see, the scale is 1 with a base of 1. Well, I think I want a giant armor chest. Hmm. Now, you can go... You can go big if you want. Let's just start off with two. Let's make it twice the size. Perfect, right? Let's make it... half the size. Now, you can go to a maximum of 10 times the size. As you see, I'm inside the box right now, it's so large. And from there, in the other direction, 2.01, and you can make it as tiny as tiny can be. Um, I have no idea where it is now. So, let's just bring it back one and there you have it now another good command to use is toggle clipping now this will basically make you fly around right you can move through objects you can get underneath the ground what I use this for is to make sure that my items are actually resting on the floor when I want them to rest on the floor instead of hovering an inch or two above the ground uh, I'm, I'm real picky about that uh, it's important to me. So I would... And, um... When you use toggle clipping, make sure that there is no... code in the center. Otherwise, it's not going to work for you. So that is T-C-L. Toggle clipping. Collisions are off. And now, we can fly around. We can take a peek under things, go through rocks. Now, 
let's take a quick stroll up here and I'll show you a few ways that I've used this command myself. Um, now, like I said, I like everything to set on the floor nicely. Like right here, I didn't want to set it above, I wanted to set it on the lower end so it wasn't sticking out and floating, and this was how I did it. You get down so you can see the exact level of the floor and uh, place it perfectly. Now, if you're really into details, uh, this will come in handy. And just for safe measure, if you put it just a hair underneath the ground, you're guaranteed not to go over. Well, folks, that's about it for the basics. Now, don't be afraid to ask any questions in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer them. And don't be afraid to let me know about your successes. I'm eager to hear about it. If you got some use out of this video or you just like what you saw, don't be afraid to like and subscribe.